Hi everyone, this is Katie, also from the Kramer Life. Today, I am the Kramer Life. So, we have been moving our chickens and rotating them throughout the yard. And we have been also hatching out several different batches of eggs, letting the broody hens batch out egg, batch out, hatch out their eggs. And we've also been using our incubator to hatch out eggs. So far, we've had no issues. We had 22 um, chickens. Our flock was steadily growing. We have five more eggs being laid on. Unfortunately, this week we have had our first few losses on the homestead. We have had, we weren't sure exactly what had happened. We had five of the small little baby chicks that we were gradually letting out. They had been just outside in a little pen um, inside the enclosure so they could start getting used to outside. Then we started raising it up so they could go out if they wanted, but they could still have the protection going back in. We did this with the juveniles um, and we've done this a couple times with no issue. We went out three nights ago to put all of the little chicks away and we only had four of them. Couldn't find out what happened. Um, so we went ahead and put the four away looked around for about probably 20 minutes. It was pitch dark, uh, couldn't see anything. Next day we went out, heard a little bit of a ruckus throughout the day, went out to check. We only had three little chickens. Very sad. Um, we did, I still didn't see, we assume it was an aerial predator, uh, but we didn't see what was happening. So of course, true Kramer fashion, we did a lot of research. And we looked up a couple different things you know, there's obvious decoys that you can use. Uh, some people say use lights and sounds to scare away hawks or to scare away, uh, not falcons. Uh, not sure what it was again. Also give them lots of cover. Uh, you know, I've also heard that, you know, strings or things that, you know, their wingspan, it kind of throws off their perception. Uh, so we were reading all sorts of things we decided to do a couple of them. <laughs> First thing we did is we moved them into an extremely <laughs> covered area where it's right next to us. It's very covered. They have tons of places to hide out. It would be hard for a bird to get in there. We moved them and I would say less than an hour of them being there. We heard a ruckus. We heard Betty Jane being super loud looked out our off my office window and sure enough there was a hawk trying to scoop down and get a bird thankfully he did not catch anything so we knew the cover alone was not enough so i decided to make a scarecrow <laughs> grab some old clothes that i didn't care about and i uh, grabbed some cedar sticks some hay and we made a scarecrow this is my fashionista uh, scarecrow here. <laughs> so what we did for this uh, beautiful scarecrow is we took an old work shirt of mine and some old corduroys that uh, don't fit me anymore. <laughs> and uh, we have, uh, we've been cutting down a bunch of cedar uh, after the pigs have gone through areas. We've been looking to kind of clear that out to thin out the woods basically. And so what Nate and I did is we took a long cedar post and we pitched a leg off of one end and then we put a T at the top for the arms, went ahead and threw some pants on. Uh, we did stuff it to give some nice thighs here uh, for the, with some hay. And then we stuffed the shirt a little bit for some hay to give it some bulk. Uh, and then threw on one of my, my uh, straw hat uh, it has officially scared Nate at least four times, so I'm hoping that it's going to also scare a hawk uh, or anything. The birds have felt a little bit more comfortable coming out here since we've put it out. We've seen the chickens come a little bit more in this area, so we're hopeful that the predators are going to be scared by this, this fierce beast. Um, this does have a tripod in the back we did add. Uh, support behind it just so it would you know be pretty sturdy in case there was wind or lucky decided to jump on it or something 
I don't know what he would do, but why stop there? <laughs> We also, uh, you know, we didn't want to keep losing our birds. And like I said, we have five more that are getting ready to hatch out here soon. So Nate went ahead and took some of our T-posts and some poly wire and strung up some crazy contraptions <laughs> all over where there was open areas. One of the many things that we found in the barns during our Treasure Tuesday hunts have been these amazing tea posts. We've been utilizing them for several different purposes. Uh, what we use them for here is we went ahead and put in some tea posts and just used poly wire since we have quite a bit of poly wire to string it up. And what the intent or the purpose of this is is to basically give um, the, the sense that there's a cover or that there's some sort of uh, area or deterrent for the birds, because uh, typically the birds will you know, spread out their wings and if they don't feel like they can get their wings through an area, a lot of times that'll deter them from going down and in. So that was kind of the thought behind this. Uh, so what we did is we strung it up and crisscrossed it in the more open areas. And um, we just wanted to make sure that anywhere where the chickens might not have the protection of this lovely overgrown patch of trees here and all the vines, if they decided to come out here, the, they wouldn't be quite as open um, or vulnerable, I guess. And then today, <laughs> we went ahead and said, you know what, let's just try all of the methods. Uh, found a really cool wind chime, so we, we added that in as well. I'm not a fan of wind chimes normally, but I liked the sound of this one. There, I liked the sound of this one. It also had solar, so we thought it would also add light. We do have motion lights out here as well in different areas, and we do put the chickens up at night as well. So we are doing everything we can to keep our chickens safe, probably more than we need to. But losing three in three days, we didn't like that. Um, we lost one of our juvenile ones, probably about two months old. And we lost two of our younger ones that were probably right around a month old. So that was unfortunate. Hopefully <laughs> we're doing everything that we can. We'll look and we won't continue this at every single time we turn them. We are looking to uh, incorporate them into with the sheep at a later date and move them all together also to have some additional uh, safeguards for them as well. We got some decoys also. We found this owl with a cool swivel bobble head. And we also found another one, which is a falcon, I believe. Or a hawk, maybe a hawk. Not sure what he is, but also here so um, so this in addition to the poly wire is um, I don't know we have like seven lines of defense happening right now we have the really loud sheep <laughs> we have the wind chime we have two decoys we have the wine the line we have the covered brush area and we also have a scarecrow. If we lose any more birds, that is the bravest hawk I've ever met. <laughs> Another item that uh, I didn't mention as a line of protection, but something also to note is chickens are most vulnerable when they're eating and drinking because their heads are down and um, it's easier for them to get picked off, I guess. <laughs> So we moved all of the watering and, um, and we make sure to feed them where there is a good amount of cover. So that's another thing that we're doing. The area that they were in that we were having issues was a very wide open area with, I think maybe only one small tree for cover. And so their food and their water was an open area. So we've also uh, worked on being a little bit smarter about how we put their food in their water so they're more protected during the day. 
So this is what we did when we realized our chickens were being attacked. We wanted to make sure that we did everything we could think of to ensure their safety. We don't want to lose any more chickens. We have two broody hens. We just saw that Karen is broody again, and so she's very upset that we kicked her out of the nesting box because we didn't need three girls in the nesting box right now. So let us know your thoughts. What has worked for you? Uh, is there a certain method that you've used that you found really good success with? Uh, we're in a new area. We're wanting to be able to rotate our chickens and move them around as much as possible. We won't always have the ability to have cover, so that's why we're trying out a couple different things. Uh, but we'd love to know from you all what has worked, what hasn't worked in your experience with chickens when you have aerial predators. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, this is Katie. I'm used to saying also from the Kramer life, but today it's just me. Ah! Just kidding, that was stupid. Mm. Okay. <laughs>